Inez as well. Let's take a look at that roster. Let's take a look at this roster. You have 37 players that are on the 40-man. So all of those players are eligible to be on the 26-man roster without having to be added to the roster. Of those 37 players, you got to find 26 of them for your 26-man, 13 play- position players and 13 pitchers. Of the position players, you currently only have 13 on your 40-man anyway. In the outfield, you have Jerkson Profar, Jose Azucar, Fernando Tatis Jr., and Tucapito Marcano. In the infield, you have Manny Machado, Hassan Kim, Xander Bogarts, Jake Cronworth, Matthew Batten, and Eggy Rosario. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then you have three catchers. You have Luis Camposano, you have Kyle Higashioka, and you have Brett Sullivan. Those are the 13 players that you have currently on your 40-man roster. Don't have everybody else. That's it. So those players, by default, are your 13 that would make the 26-man roster. Again, you have three opening spots, and I'm sure they're keeping those open for a couple of more signings, hopefully. Or guys like Jackson Merrill and Graham Pauly and maybe a Cal Mitchell. But we'll get to the non-roster invitees in just a second. So those are your 13 guys. Those are your 13 position players. Pitching staff. You're looking for 13. This is where the competition is really fun. You got eight bullpen pieces you got to find. You got five rotation pieces. As of right now, you got three that are guaranteed to be on the roster in the rotation. You Darvish, Joe Musgrove, and Michael King. Other players, according to the Padres roster on their depth chart, that are battling for a rotation spot. Randy Vasquez, who's pitching today. Johnny Brito. Matt Waldron. Pedro Avila. Yoro Iriarte. Jairo Iriarte. Graham Otto and Jay Groom. Those are your pitchers battling for a rotation spot. As of right now. Which could change. Bullpen. Also could include some of these guys that are battling for rotation spot. But your bullpen, as I mentioned with the rotation, you got three guys in the rotation that are guaranteed to be on the team. In the bullpen, assuming you know no injuries or whatever, here's your five players that are guaranteed to be in the bullpen. Robert Suarez, Matsui, Peralta, Go and De Los Santos. Those are your five guys in the bullpen confirmed. I don't know what they're doing with Adrian Morhone, by the way. He's not listed as a rotation depth piece, but that's according to Padres.com, so take that for what it's worth. I don't know if that's the official depth chart or not, or just the one that they want to show fans. So I know EC Money was throwing that out there. Suarez, Matsui, Peralta, Go, and De Los Santos are your five players that are probably going to be in the bullpen for sure, which means you have Wilson, Cosgrove, Gillespie, Jacob, Patino, Kolek, who has to be on the team, otherwise you give him back to the Mariners. He's a Rule 5 draft pick. Estrada, Reynolds, and Morahone battling for three spots. On top of potentially Vasquez, Brito, Waldron, Avila, Ariarte, Otto, and Groom. Those three spots of the bullpen are going to be filled by some guys that could pitch and be very, very good. I like the way the bullpen's at. They've loaded up on bullpen arms. You need pitching. You need pitching, pitching, pitching. They got it in the bullpen for sure. Starting rotation, a little shaky. Maybe they could turn Luis Patino into a starting pitcher. We'll see what Randy Vasquez does today for the Padres. I like Randy Vasquez. I think he's got good stuff. He's still a young kid. Johnny Brito, we saw him a little bit in spring training. You can't live and die by these spring training outings either. You're just going to go nuts. You're going to go nuts. They're working on things. They're working on pitches. They're working on different spots to try to get ready for the season. They're not necessarily worried about you know winning and losing games.
So those are the way everything plays out. I didn't really mention the position players that are guaranteed. I mean, Profar's on the team. Fernando's on the team. Those are your two outfielders out of the four that are on the team. Machado's on the team. Kim, Bogarts, Cronenworth, they're all going to make the team. Camposano, Higashioka are going to be your catchers. That's eight players. You need five left on the to fill out the roster. Right now, it's Azakar, Marcano, Rosario, and Batten, as well as Brett Sullivan. So if you start to break things down, I mean, is Kike Hernandez better than Azucar, Marcano, Rosario, Batten, or Sullivan? I would say he is. I would say Kike Hernandez is better than those five players. You still need a starting left fielder, but if you had an outfield of Profar, Tatis, Merrill and Hernandez. It's not the worst. It's not the worst outfield. It's it's okay. It's not the best outfield in baseball. It's probably not a top 10 outfield. And if it's any type of ranking, it's because Fernando is in the outfield. It's a very serviceable outfield. But that way you could spot start with Profar and Merrill in the outfield. I don't know if you're going to carry an extra outfielder. I know Marcano can play infield and outfield, so maybe you keep him as a bench piece instead of an Eggy Rosario or a Matthew Batten. But your bench, I mean, your bench is, is just super weak. Aside from Jerickson Profar, who sounds like he's going to be the focal point on the bench, who's coming up in the ninth inning where you need a big hit? Are you putting Eggy Rosario there? Tucapito Marcano? Jose Azucar? Are those the players you're throwing up there in the ninth inning when you need a hit? Get a guy off the bench? I mean, come on. Brett Sullivan? I think Kyle Higashioka is a good bench piece, but is he going to be your go-to guy every time he's your other catcher? Got to keep somebody ready to go just in case of an emergency. Non-roster invitees, Jackson Merrill. At this rate, he's making the team. They said the only way Jackson Merrill makes the team is if he earns it. What does that mean? Does he earn it because he deserves to be a starter on most Major League Baseball teams? Or does he earn it because his competition's not very good? What are we defining as earning it right now? Oscar Mercado? I mean, is he going to make the ball club? Is Oscar Mercado going to be your starting left fielder? Guys played in the majors for a decent amount. Are you excited about Oscar Mercado? Is it going to be Marilyn Marcy out there? Cal Mitchell's looked pretty good so far, but again, spring training, you can't over-evaluate this. In the infield, your current backups that are on the 40-man that are expected to make this team are Matthew Batten and Eggy Rosario. Your non-roster invites are Castanian, Wade, McCoy, Mondu, Martorella, and Pauly. You don't have veterans on this bench. You have a bunch of young, unproven players. Every day that this goes on, where the Padres don't sign somebody, it just feels like they're content with what the roster they have. I mean, I told that that's their 13 right there. There's nobody else on their 40 man roster that's a position player. Those are their 13 players Profar, Azakar, Fernando Tatis Jr. Marcano, Machado, Kim, Bogarts, Cronenworth, Baton, Rosario, Camposano, Higashioka, and Sullivan. Is that a playoff caliber team? I think they can make the playoffs with the stars they have on that roster. But, man, that bottom half of the lineup, that, that could turn into last year's bottom half of the order. 
with the only difference of you have some upside because you don't know what some of these young guys can do. But if you got seven, eight, nine of Azakar, Rosario, and Batten, where you got seven, eight, nine of Azakar, Merrill, and Rosario. But I don't know. That team could make the playoffs just because the expanded playoffs and the fact that you have to compete with some other teams in baseball that aren't very good, and they don't even have the stars that the Padres have. I mean, I I, I went over that a couple of weekends ago. Start going down the list. I mean, who? what team is better than the Padres right now that's not going to win their division? The Diamondbacks? Okay, I'll buy that. The Giants, maybe? I'm not really sold on the Giants yet. I mean, if they get Matt Chapman, I think it's a different story, but right now I'm not really afraid of the Giants. That's just in the division. I know you're not afraid of the Rockies. Go to the Central. Central's a Central's ridiculous. Cardinals are going to win that division. And then out, outside of the Cardinal, are you afraid of the Pirates? Are you afraid of the Reds? I know the Cubs got Bellinger back, but that was like their only real move. Is it Bellinger and the Cubs that concern you about a playoff spot? Who's con- Is it the Brewers? The Brewers didn't even try to win during the offseason. They got rid of anybody that was worth their salt, including their manager, who ends up going to Chicago. Are you worried about any team in the NL Central? Go to the East. Phillies, fine, fair. Are you afraid of the Mets right now? They just lost Kodai Singa. Have you seen their rotation? Potter's rotation is better than the Mets. I'm not afraid of the Mets. The Marlins? Marlins really haven't done anything either. They picked up Tim Anderson. Padres could outdo the Marlins with this lineup. The Nationals? The Nationals are like the Padres rejects right now. I think C.J. Abrams would be pretty good, but are you worried about the Nationals? This team could make the playoffs. Can they win in the playoffs? No. I I think it'd be hard-pressed to, to say that that was going to be the case. You excited for this team? Profar, Azakar, Fernando, Mercano, Machado, Kim, Bogarts, Cronenworth, Rosario, Batten, Camposano, Higashioka, Sullivan. It was really high, and then it really falls off. I like the bullpen, though. Tation's top three is good, but you're, you're putting all your eggs in those three, and you're hoping they don't get hurt. I don't know. I, it just continues to point to they have to make another move. They have to make another move. I just don't say, I just don't think Merrill is ready at this point. Again, it's going to come down to hitting. I don't want to see anybody get excited about him making a catch in the outfield again. He is this talented player. He is a unbelievable athlete. He was a first-round draft pick. He's a shortstop by trade. The guy's going to look good in the field. If the guy hit and couldn't play defense, you're okay with that. The outfield is not the concern. Well, he's adjusting the center field. He's adjusting the left field. He's an athlete at the highest level. He could play the outfield. I'm more concerned about him hitting a fastball at the major league level. And then after he does that, which I think, he th- I think he'll be able to do hitting that big that that big league curve, that big league slider, that wipeout sweeper. That's what I'm more concerned about. Otherwise, you could have just kept Trent Grisham. So for everybody that was against like maybe the Kike Hernandez situation, and again, they're not really, I mean, he might be a starter. I think he's better option for you in center field. I mean, look at the roster I just told you. Are the Padres too good for Kike Hernandez right now? I don't think so. They need some depth. They need to be able to get some guys in. So Merrill and Polly and Marcy can start in the minor leagues and get everyday reps, and then you could use them when they are ready to go.